So, um, but what is salvation? I'll just cover that. If somebody's watching this and they don't, you know, you're not saved or you, you say, well, I was raised in church buildings and honestly, I have no idea. You know, I have no feelings of relation to the people in the Bible. I don't go through what they went through. I, it just is a, it's like reading a dead book to me. Well, make sure you're using a King James Bible because that's the living word of God. The others are, others are from the Vatican. Um, they're from the Nestle's text primarily and, and that goes back to the Vatican. Um, it's a cursed text. It's an Egyptian text, not a Syrian text like that of the King James Bible, the received text that underlies the King James Bible, primarily. But anyhow, um, make sure you're using the King James Bible. That's very important. But uh, um, when it comes to salvation, you, know, you say, okay, what do you mean? What is salvation? How do you be saved? Well, salvation, if I said right now I need salvation on my motorcycle, You'd say, huh? Um, what are you talking about? You don't need to be saved on that bike. You're just cruising down that road there. You're, you're doing just fine. Everything's okay. What do, you, what do you mean you need to be saved? Well, what if I go up here a little ways? And I hope this doesn't happen, but <laughs> hope I'm not prophesying things. But I go up here a little ways and I just lose it in the stones and I go fly off the edge of the road here and down into a, a big ravine and, and I'm laying down there and I got a broken leg. There's no way I can walk. My arm is broken. The bike is just totally totaled and just ruined. And uh, I have nothing I can do. I'm laying there helpless. And I'm hurt bad. And I know I'm going to die. And I and I know I deserve to die. I was nobody's fault but my own. I was, I was the one who went too fast into the corner. I was the one that did something stupid. So I can't blame anybody but myself. I'm laying there in the bottom of that ravine. And I'm hurt bad. And I need help. What do I do? I just sit there and say... I'm just going to take a nap because, you know, somebody will eventually find me. I don't need to, to do anything or whatever else. Of course not. If you have any common sense, you know, I'd be laying there. I'd say, help, help. I'd start yelling at the top of my lungs. I'd listen for a car going by. I'd start screaming, yelling, trying to do whatever I could to get somebody's attention. Why? Because I need to be saved. You understand? Now, here's how it works out. You mess your life up. As a lost person, you get into the world and you get into bad relationships and you get into bad jobs and you get into, you just rip, make a wreck of your life and you're wrecked finally, you're just there and you're crashed, you're, your relationships are falling apart, your health is falling apart, everything is just messed up and you're just going, oh boy, what is the point, you know, what is, what in the world, how did I get to this point in life? Well, you need to be saved, you see? You can't do it yourself. You're laying there. You're broken. You're you're messed up. You get that? You're broken. You know, like my little analogy with a broken bone. You're broken. I need to be saved. Well, you need somebody that's stronger than you. That's somebody that's that's better than you to come along and help you. Well, in salvation, in terms of salvation, you say I'm broken. I can't fix myself. I've tried to reform my life. I've tried to give up the alcohol or the cigarettes or the pornography or the bad relationships, the fornication, the, the drugs, or whatever else you're into. I've tried, and I just can't. I just keep wrecking. I just keep messing up. You know? Well, then, what can you do? you got to find somebody else that's, that's uh, better than you, that knows how to help you, that can save you. And that person is Jesus Christ. See, you can't say, well, I'm going to go to church and things. Well, what if you find the wrong church? What if they preach the wrong gospel? And they do all the time you know they're not going to help you you have to find Jesus Christ and you have to say you have to call upon the name of the Lord you say God I don't know what in the world I'm going to do I sure have messed my life up I'm wrecked I'm just ruined I screwed my life up here I've just got up my marriage is in, in a shambles if if you're even married or maybe you've you know gotten a divorce or whatever else I just messed my life all up God, I need help. I can't, I'm just laying here broken. I can't even move anymore. I'm not even going to try to get up and get back on this bike and try to run again. I'm, I know I'm just going to wreck again. I know I'm just going to mess up again. Well, you call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. You call upon him and you say, God, can you please save me? I need help with this sinful life that I have. I need, I need help getting away from this stuff. I can't do it on my own. And then you read in the Bible where it says that he died on the cross to pay for your sins. 
See, he'll help you. He'll help you change your life. He'll help you reform your life. But more importantly than that, he died on the cross almost 2,000 years ago to pay for your sins. All right, you say pay for them. Well, I, I don't understand what that means. Well, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. See, you disobeyed the law. You know, if I would speed here someplace, not on this road, but if, if I would speed and get busted and the, the police officer hands me a fine and I look at the fine, I say, oh, I can't pay that. I don't have the money for that. And the police officer says, well, that's not my problem, pal. You disobeyed the law. You disobeyed the speed limit and I caught you. Okay? You, you transgressed the law and you've been caught and now you have to pay. But you say, well, I can't pay. I don't have that kind of money. And all of a sudden somebody taps you on the shoulder and they say, I'll pay it. I'll take care of that, that uh, traffic ticket there, that, that speeding fine. I'll take care of it, friend. You know what you would do? You would say, oh, buddy, uh, buddy I owe you. You know, I don't know who you are, but, but uh, tell me who you are. I'd, I'd like to pay you back. Certainly. I've got to stand up a little bit. In my, uh, uh, I'm getting a little sore from riding on these roads. Um, <clears throat> but that's Jesus Christ, friend. That's a picture of Jesus Christ. He comes along and he says, I'll pay that fine for you. The wages of sin is death. Okay, you've earned it. You've earned death. You've earned eternity in hell. But guess what? I'll pay that fine for you. He died on the cross. He shed his blood to pay for your sins. Paid in full. You say, what do I do? got to do to get that? Well, come to him in an, in an act of faith and say, you know what? I'm a sinner. God, I know that. I've wrecked my life. I know that I'm worthy of death. I know that I have a big fine above me. <laughs> that I got to pay and I can't pay it so I believe that that death that you died on the cross I put my faith in that and uh, that death that you died Lord I want that I want that to be my payment for sin whoa and you put your faith in that that death and you say just the death well the burial and resurrection see if Jesus just died on the cross well what would it mean it wouldn't mean anything <laughs> He'd be like anybody else. He'd be like Buddha or Muhammad or Confucius or anybody else. Charles Darwin, any leader of a religion. And Charles Darwin was one of the leaders of the evolution religion. But uh, you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you say, I, I believe in him. Why? He died and he was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, according to what the Bible says. You say, well, whoa, hold on a second here. Uh, well, I heard that the Bible has contradictions in it. Well, absolutely. The Bible is filled with contradictions. If you don't rightly divide it you say huh well so you're not going to get a lot of this if you're lost but you can look at the old testament and you can see they're sacrificing animals and they're going out to war and all kinds of stuff you get to the new testament no animals being sacrificed and and love your enemies well that's a contradiction that doesn't make any sense well you rightly divide things you see a new testament was brought in by jesus christ when he died on the cross the death of the testator talks about in hebrews chapter 9 all right that's what's going on there. And you say, but I, I heard these different things and whatever. Let me tell you something. I have never seen a real, real contradiction that's not a dispensational type of a thing. I've never actually seen a real contradiction. Never. And I never will. In the King James Bible, anyhow, because the King James Bible is God's perfect word. God's perfect book. And there's the scholars out there, you know, they've, they've answered all these supposed contradictions and things. And, um, you know, but people try to come up with contradictions. Why? Well, because they're trying to say that the Bible's not true so that they can continue in sin, which is insanity when you realize what sin is. Sin is negative. All right? So, I'm uh, going to be connecting to another trail here. This is now ITS 83. I'll get back to talking here about salvation in just a minute. Whoa. <laughs> Almost wiped out. So, <clears throat> getting back to salvation, um, your faith has to come in with the Bible. And again, you know, I'll get people and they'll say, Well, Brother Brian, I, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I, I know I'm a sinner. I know I need to change some things and, and whatever. And, and I, I've done what the Bible says to be saved, but, you know, I, I don't know if I'm really saved. Well, here's the thing. What are you putting your faith in? You say, well, Jesus Christ. Okay, but faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. 
See, what you need to do is you need to say that King James Bible, that's God's book. I know it's God's book. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 says, uh, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. You see that? You need to know that you have eternal life, but it only comes from having a written record. You see, a legal document, if I get pulled over by a police officer, and... Um, and he says to me, sir, he says, I, is that your motorcycle? I say, yes, sir, it certainly is. He says, okay, I'm going to need to see the registration. License and registration. I say, well, just take my word for it, buddy. I, I, you know, I own the bike. He says, I'm going to need to see the registration. I need to see proof. I need to see written proof that that bike is yours. Well, so it is with salvation. You need to be able to show written proof that you're saved. Okay. And if you can't show that written proof, well, what are you basing it on? Feelings? Well, feelings come and go. Feelings change. What you need to do is you need to say, I am saved, I am born again because of the written record of God's Word. I have faith that the King James Bible is God's perfect book. Not, well, it's a good translation, but probably eventually we should update it. No, 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 no. It's God's perfect Word. Inspired. True. You know? And that's why a lot of people are confused about salvation and they don't have an assurance of salvation because it goes back to the thing of not really knowing for sure, uh, or excuse me, not really knowing, you know, they, they're confused about their salvation. I just looked down at something there. They're confused about their salvation because they had their beliefs on the King James Bible mixed up. You know? Um... Uh, there in uh, Peter, I think First Peter, it says about uh, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You say, well, liveth, that has to be the manifest word, Jesus Christ, the capital word, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's talking about him, because it's liveth. Uh, no, actually, in context, you read it, it's talking about the written word. It's a lowercase w. The written word of God is living. It liveth and abideth forever. Right? So you say, well, I, I, I'm just not sure. Okay, then get your beliefs on the King James Bible figured out. All right? I'm sure that I'm the owner of this motorcycle. Why? Because I have written documentation at home to prove it. I can show it. I have the documentation to say that I paid for this book, or this bike, excuse me, and uh, it's mine. All right? Well, the written record that you have of your salvation, your birth certificate, so to speak, is your King James Bible. You can claim the promises in that book. You can put your faith in that book and say, you know what? I can't see Jesus dying on the cross. I can't see, you know, the events of the crucifixion. But I can see what it says in this book, and I believe this book. Okay, that's the important thing there. That's what will give you assurance of salvation. I know a lot of young believers will, you know, struggle with that. And they say, you know, I, I just... I, I'm sure, I, I think I got saved, but I just, ah, I don't know, and I'm just, I'm scared, and, and whatever. Um, you need to get that thing sorted out. And one of the big things that false prophets and false teachers will do is they'll say, well, of course you're saved. Don't even think about it. Don't even question it. Just just forget about it. You're saved. You're in. You're just, you know, you've believed, haven't you? Well, of course. Then, okay, then you're, you're in. Well, you need to think about that. You need to be careful about that. So, that is salvation. Coming to God as a sinner and putting your faith in the written word of God and saying, that book says I can be saved if I, if I believe by faith that Jesus died for my sins and he was buried and then he rose again the third day. And that's it. And when you do that, uh, you say, what about baptism? Well, baptism is fine. Baptism shows that, you know, it's kind of a... Oh, oh man, didn't see that coming. Well, so much for keeping my feet dry, eh? Ugh. Well, what fun is dirt riding if you can't get your feet wet occasionally? That used to actually be a lake right there. I think it was a beaver that had dammed it up, but anyhow. Oh, man, I'm soaked now. <laughs> oh, yeah. This trail system here goes for just... Miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. And, um... Uh, 
there used to be a huge big mud puddle here somewhere. But um, I'll get back to what I was saying here in just a minute. <laughs> but uh, I just want to answer a couple of things quickly here. Oh, the thing about baptism. Okay, let me, let me finish up on that. Um, getting baptized is okay, but it's not necessary for salvation. It's just more of an outward ordinance where you say, you know, I'm just doing this thing to show that I, my old man is dead. I'm not, I'm not going to live like I used to live, um, which is fine. It's a, it's a good thing to do. Uh, not going to keep you out of heaven or anything if you don't do it, but, you know, I think it's important to do. Uh, man, 